welcome to Tash TV. I hope you have had a brilliant week and are geared up for a super weekend. So excited. Uh, thank you so much for all your questions. Um, heaps and heaps of questions have come in, so I feel bad because I, I want to get to you all and help you all. Um, so I'll get to you as quick as possible and um, there's plenty of Fridays to come, so I will get to a question. So thank you, thank you very much for all your questions that have come through. Um, today's question is from Ruby and she said she would like to know some exercises um, that she needs to do um, when she's riding dressage. So I remember I used to be like this, I used to hate, I know, can you imagine, like now I love it, but when I was young I used to really hate training dressage. It was much easier to go practice cross country because you just started galloping and jumping things. Um, yeah, I didn't really have a strategy, <laughs> hence why I wasn't that successful at it, um, around yeah, any of that jumping stuff, but I found it very easy. I'm like, okay, I'm going to practice jumping. Okay, well, all I have to do is jump. Um, to practice dressage um, to the untrained eye, and um, I'm sure when my husband is watching me ride, he's probably like, hey, you're just doing circles. A lot of circles. And um, it's taken a lot of time for me to really appreciate, appreciate, appreciate um, the distinctions and the subtleties um, and all the immense things that you can do when you are doing that circle. I love circles because I'm not doing a circle. Yeah, that might be what you're seeing, but I'm doing so much more than that. So, um, you said, uh, Ruby, in your question that you weren't perhaps looking to compete, but you just still wanted some exercises to do um, when you are riding your flat work. So, um, one of the things I do every day, whether it's a three-year-old or a Grand Prix horse, is transitions. So, you want to make sure that your horse is really reacting um, really well to your leg. So, you're only using light leg um, for your horse to go walk, trot, canter, and it's, it's performing all those upward transitions really easily and quickly off your aids. And same with your downwards, that you only have to use your half hop, your seat, and perhaps a little bit of outside rein, your horse comes back to your trot, your walk, your halt, whatever it is. So definitely when you're riding around doing your flat work, you can just practice all a myriad of different combinations of um, transitions. So you can do walk, halt, halt, walk. You can um, walk two steps and halt again. Um, you can practice staying in halt so your horse you know, doesn't anticipate um, that okay once we halt we move again that he stays in halt. You can practice the actual halt with your um, keeping your halt square and making sure that he's you know standing on his four feet in a square position not with one leg out. Um, you can do and then we start going okay walk trot, trot walk transitions again you can go trot five steps walk, trot two steps walk, walk five steps trot. Um, you can really play around with okay I'm going to count the strides and make sure that I get the transition whenever I want um, and then you can do trot halt, halt trot um, and then we've got the trot canter, canter trot and I love trot canter transitions because I really teach the horse to only move off my seat so I have a trot seat and a canter seat and the horse then off he goes and then when I bring back to my trot seat he comes down. That takes practice, I don't get on a three year old breaking a horse that's just been broken in and go, okay, listen to my seat and off we go. They actually do need to have some training around how to listen for your really subtle cues. Um, hence why I love training dressage so much because it's all about training the response to the very, very subtlest debates. So that'll keep you busy for hours. Then we have um, kind of a, a version of training transitions, which is transitions through the gate. So, um, uh, so in the Grand Prix work we have like a collected walk and an extended walk, um, a collected trot, a medium trot and extended trot, a uh, collected canter, medium canter and extended canter. So in layman's terms, and this is how I still think about it, and you can judge me and say, oh my god, she should be more evolved than that, but guys, I'm just honest, sorry if, if that offends, but I'm just honest. So um, I just think big trot, little trot. So, if you're watching me in a Grand Prix test, and God forbid, probably got some Grand Prix judge watching you right now going, really? Um, but I just go. So, whether it says medium trot or extended trot, I just go. And if it says extended trot, I just go further and more if I can. But I'm just thinking go, and in collected work, I'm just going collect! Um, yeah. So when I'm training um, at home, I'm training my transitions, um, I just go, okay, collect the trot. So you might not be Grand Prix, you might be level five. You can still go, okay, little trot, big trot, little trot, 
big trot, which is all you have to think about, and that eventually gets into your distinguishes, you know, like when you're in a Grand Prix, so your little trot is collector trot, or it might even be passage, so it's passage at standard trot. Comes from a three-year-old going, little trot, big trot. So when I say little trot, I just mean collect it, make it slower, make it shorter, whatever you can to that trot, make it whoop, and then explode, go big, make it go. Obviously we don't want it to run, but with a three year old, I'm sorry, it runs. Um, I'm just teaching it to go, there are different levels of trot, that the horse doesn't go, okay, when she puts her legs on, she means go up a gate, and it means canter. No, legs don't mean go up a gate, unless I'm asking for a particular aid and asking the canter aid. I teach my horse, there's little trot and big trot. Legs mean go forward, go into my hand, go bigger, rather than necessarily move up a gate. So little trot, big trot, little canter, big canter. Um, and these are all things that you're playing with on a three year old and a four year old because that turns into your collective canter, it turns into your pirouette, it turns into your passage. So people say, oh, you know, I, I don't want to train to Grand Prix. I'm like, you're training Grand Prix now. As soon as you get on, you're training Grand Prix. It doesn't look like Grand Prix yet. It takes time for the horse to develop its muscles and all that kind of stuff, but you're working on it now. Um, so I know in Pony Club I learned this and did it. So, just little trot, big trot, little canter, big canter. Um, and obviously, ideally, um, you want the collection to come from no hand. I mean, only a slight hand and coming off your seat so the horse, you know, doesn't go on the forehand and, and kind of push through that he starts to carry behind. And same when you collect a canter, medium canter. Um, there's so much more when then we think about lateral work and we go into leg yield, shoulder and travel and all that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not saying that you do that on a three year old, um, it's just the hint of it. But I think I've talked for too long, I meant to keep these videos short. So I trust that in itself, Ruby. And that is pretty much what I do every day. So, and that would take 20, 25 minutes. So have a play with all of that stuff and I'll make sure I'll record another video, I'll put it in the notes um, about other stuff you can do. But that's definitely giving you something to think about. Love to you all, have a fantastic week and I'll see you soon.